Hey, what's up guys? I'm gonna unbox and review the new AOVO Pro ES80, which is a insanely budget scooter. Possibly the lowest price scooter I have ever reviewed. It comes with a 350 watt motor, which was kind of surprising to me. I thought it would be a 250 based on price. A top speed of 19 and a half miles an hour and has a range of up to 20 miles, but me being 200 pounds and I will be doing some hills, I doubt I am going to be getting those that range. I'll probably get half of that if I had to just take a wild guess. So it comes with Allen wrenches and some screws for the handlebar. The power adapter is 100 to 240 volts. This is what it looks like. That is the plug right there and the power connecting part right here. And we have a basic instructions manual right here. Setup is super simple and straightforward. You just pretty much put in the wire through the stem, uh, pop in the handlebar, and you put in the four screws, two in the back and two in the front. If you have your own tools, it's easier. You can do it with the Allen wrench as well. All right, so taking a closer look, we have rear disc brakes, which is kind of phenomenal considering the price of the scooter for it to come with disc brakes is, is kind of crazy, actually. I was expecting drum brakes, so that's a good sign right there. We do have honeycomb tires, so the good thing about that is that you could pretty much never get flats. However, the bad thing is typically the rides are more bumpy. We have the tail light. It does light up when you apply the brakes. This is for the folding mechanism. That's where it latches to. Uh, we have the kickstand right there. So the deck is not large. However, the good thing is you could kind of stick your feet out like this, which is something I like to do when I'm riding. I mean, that's kind of a personal preference thing. We have the charger on the bottom right here. So that's where you connect it. And we have the motor in the front. And we have the folding mechanism right here. We have some wires for the brakes and we have all the controls and stuff. So we have our rear disc brakes, we have our bell. This is for the folding mechanism, which attaches to the rear fender to allow you to carry it from the front stem. If you hold the power button for two or three seconds, it turns on the scooter. We have a little red S, it's hard to see in the camera, but that indicates we're in the fastest mode. We have our speedometer currently in miles an hour and the battery indicator, which appears to be fully charged or close to fully charged right out of the box. So if I tap the power button once, it will turn on the lights. If I tap it again, it will turn off the lights. If I double tap, it will switch between modes. There are three modes, essentially the slowest mode, double tap to the standard mode and double tap again to the fastest mode, which is indicated by a red S. And if we triple tap, it will actually enable cruise control, which if you hold the throttle for, typically it's around five seconds or so. For scooters, it maintains that speed so you don't have to hold it anymore. I'm personally not a fan of that, so I typically leave that off. And this scooter by default is not a kick scooter. The throttle is not a kick scooter by default. It's actually a zero start. So if I hold the throttle, it'll actually go right away. So do be careful with that. Now to fold the scooter is pretty straightforward, just like other scooters. And pop it in, see how fast that was. Super, super easy and super light. This is definitely one of the lightest scooters that's out there. So very, very portable in terms of electric scooters. I ran this thing through my usual tests of flats, inclines and declines. And keep in mind when I'm talking about the scooter, I'm keeping price in mind. So very important to note that. So things that are immediately noticeable is number one, the scooter is very lightweight. You feel it even when you're riding it, it's very nimble. It has normal acceleration and the handlebar is fairly narrow. So starting with the flats, it takes me up to 19 to 20 miles an hour with normal accelerations on the street. It's normal on the sidewalk. It is more on the bumpier side in terms of the feel because of the honeycomb tires. Again, the benefit is no flats. But the downside is it's not as smooth compared to pneumatic tires. So this is kind of really heavily a personal preference choice, really, because if you want a smooth scooter, you want to go for the pneumatic tires. But if you're concerned about getting potential flats, the maintenance free nature of honeycomb tires really makes uh, it might be actually worth the bumpier ride. But again, personal preference. The Ascent. This is where most budget scooters suffer. So, and this one is obviously no exception to the rule. So I tried three hills and actually surprisingly, it got me up all three. Now the steepest and longest one, however, required a lot of zigzag and it took plenty of time. I mean, to the point that it actually would have been faster 
if I actually just got off the scooter and walked it up the hill than by me just staying on the scooter. However, for the purposes of this video, I just stayed on the scooter just to see if it would make it up the hill. But towards the end, I was even thinking like, is the motor going to overheat? Because some of the scooters actually have overheat protections where they turn off. This one didn't actually overheat. It actually took me all the way up. But again, did require a bit of or a lot of zigzagging for the steepest hill. The other hills weren't too bad. Uh, did slow down, but nowhere near as much as this one. Now, keep in mind, I am around 200 pounds, which is 91 kilograms. So the fact that this super budget scooter got me up there is actually very impressive. So if you are lighter, it will fare better. If you are heavier, it'll probably not probably it will do worse or it may not even take you up. So do keep that in mind. So this is really one of the biggest differences between budget and expensive scooters. So the expensive ones just really kind of fly you up the hill where the budget ones suffer quite a bit. So that's one of the main differences. Uh, there are a lot of other differences as well, like top speed, braking capabilities, and uh, smoothness, and all a lot of other stuff. However, there are some downsides to the expensive ones as well because they're way heavier. And this thing is super portable just because it's so lightweight, and we'll touch on that in a bit. But let's get to the downhills. After about 22, because the handlebar is more on the narrow side, which makes it even more portable easier to put in your trunk however because of that it's it's a little bit harder to balance i mean you're balancing fine um up to 22 miles an hour at least for me in my personal opinion and since the scooter is rated to go to 20 it does fine however on the downhill when when i started going faster and faster i'm like all right i gotta slow down because i, I can feel like if i go a little bit faster i might not be able to handle uh, the turn so do keep that in mind now you don't have to press the throttle uh, gravity is really doing all the work and again the scooter doesn't feel it's starting to get unstable around 22 or a little bit faster than that but again that's where the brakes come in so the rear disc brake has a linear feel it's not the strongest brakes I've used but works very well for something in this price range and I had no issues slowing down with it i had no issues i was holding it pretty much uh parts of the downhill and it was fine i got and i got to the end stopped just fine very very good so to summarize this scooter performs well in its price range it climbed all the hills granted the longest and steepest one uh did struggle quite a bit but the other ones that weren't as steep and actually did it just fine it did still slow down but it wasn't too bad uh, but it does feel like a one-piece solid scooter, so it doesn't feel like I was, um, you know, on something with like 22 pieces that, no, it was, it was one solid piece, felt fine, felt stable, uh, even at its flat 20 mile an hour speed, up to 19 and a half technically, um, it was pretty good. So it really just kind of depends what you're looking for. So this thing would be great to throw in my trunk, go somewhere, park my car, and take this thing out for a spin, whether I'm going to the beach, whether I'm going to a park, uh, whether I'm going somewhere else, and I just kind of want to just uh, ride the scooter. It's actually pretty awesome for that. Super lightweight, super affordable. Let me know what you guys think of in the comment sections below. And as always, smash that subscribe button. If you guys enjoyed this video, have a lot of electric scooters and electric bikes coming up. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.